Hi, what I've got to show you today is a replacement industrial monitor. This is an LCD monitor that is used to replace the old CRT screens in um, industrial machines like uh, CNC machines. And it's from a company called Tubis. And uh, Tubis is a German company who develop and manufacture replacement LCD monitors uh, for these industrial applications. Um, I've installed a number of different types of uh, replacement monitors and uh, Tubis is by far the best that I've seen out there. The, uh, the, the amount of engineering uh, and the level of detail in these units is second to none in my opinion and they're certainly the easiest to install. As much as you can they are a plug-and-play replacement uh, of the old CRT screens and what I'd like to do today is, is take you through um, how to set up your, your screen ready for installation and machine and uh, just show you the contents of the box that you typically receive. So your unit would arrive in a box like this with um, vacuum foam packaging in it. So very sec secure for transportation um, and believe me that isn't always the case with um, other brands that I've received in the past. Um, this particular model is the LCD120046 which is for the um, Mazak Mazak Control M2, the T2, the M32T and the M+. Um, this one I'll actually be installing in uh, an M+, machine later on today. So what you get inside is um, uh, a bag which has the operators uh, or op operating manual inside. Um, like I say, this is for the Mazak. Um, it's fairly simple installation um, description. Uh, it shows uh, the PCB board which has a couple of switches and connectors where you'll make your connection and it tells you um, which particular lead you should be leaving, uh, using for the type of monitor that you've got. And I'll take you through that. Um, you don't need to be technical to be able to do this. Um, most of it is just recognition of the cables that you've got on your old CRT monitor and using the uh, replacement uh, connectors and leads um, that you'll install yourself. Um, and the, the manual gives a description of the on-screen display for setting up things like brightness, contrast, uh, offset, position of the screen, etc. You get a little bag of bits, um, which I'll take you through in a second. Um, in the bubble wrap, we have uh, the two side mounting plates which I'll uh, show you later and then we have the screen itself uh, which I'll take you through now. So the screen is um, a thing of beauty. <laughs> uh, it is uh, by far the best um, LCD replacement screens, as, as I've said, that uh, that I've seen. Um, th as you can see, the the engineering that has gone into this is is second to none. It's a fully enclosed and screened um, module, so it is uh, fully protected from interference and. Uh, uh, believe me, that is that is something you need to um, be sure you're you're getting with your replacement uh, monitors. Uh, they're used in applications where there is a a lot of electrical noise, and so you need to ensure that these these units are are nicely shielded. And uh, this unit definitely is. It's um, a fully integrated module. Um, so within the casing here. We have a dedicated AC to DC power supply 
Um, some kits you'll see they come uh, looking similar to this, but they'll have um, they'll have a external power supply that basically looks like a, a laptop power supply, which they just stick to the back of uh, of of the the LCD module, and they're typically a Chinese branded uh, cheap power supply, which. Um, in my experience, tend to blow fuses and cause problems. Uh, this unit is fully integrated with a dedicated power supply designed for this screen. And it is fully shielded, like I said, to protect it from any interference. So what we have on the back here is your uh, AC connector plug here. Um, a solid earth point, which will... Uh, attach your earth from your machine to and then the PCB where you make your electrical uh, connections. Um, there's two connectors on here one for a TTL um, type connection and one for an RGB analog connection and um, you don't need to know the difference between the two all you're looking for is the type of connector. This is a 15 pin that is a 9-pin. You'll just use the cable from your machine that is either 9-pin or 15-pin and then make the appropriate uh, adjustments of this switch for TTL or RGB and a sync screen sync switch um, which will um, actually, in both cases, you can leave in the, the top position because uh, the top position is applicable to either of those connections. Um, and this switch here, you just have all the switches left in the down position. So I'll take you through that. And on the back here, we have the three buttons or switches, push button switches, which are used for the on-screen display. Uh, uh, you've got a mode button for cycling through the various modes on the screen and the plus and minus button for making adjustments of the screen settings. And on the front side here, um, there's at the moment there's a little screen protector, plastic screen protector, which you'll remove when you make the installation. Um, protects it from being scratched and uh, fingerprints during transit. Uh, a lovely beveled... Uh, frame here which sits up against the um, uh, existing uh, frame of your machine uh, with a rubber seal uh, completely around the unit. So beautifully designed unit in my opinion. Here we have the uh, unit fully assembled. So um, again it was a simple case of uh, just fitting these thumb screws uh, to each each side and uh, that is it. It's um, very simple to mechanically put together and then we've got uh, the cable connections which you need to make. Um, so if you have the Mazda Control M2 T2 or M32T you'll be using this uh, X5 socket here which is the 9 pin um, sub D connector, this guy, and um, all you need to do is simply plug it onto the socket and make sure it's firmly um, seated in there. Um, again, this is showing the level of detail. We've got some resin here um, to make sure the wires are fully, uh, fully protected against, you know, vibration and wear and misuse, etc. Um, most most uh, kits I've seen, you, you don't get resin on these, they're not uh, protected really in any way. So that's the connection that you'll need to make and then the, the Molex connector here will connect into the female uh, that is on your existing uh, uh, setup. And then in terms of switch settings, so we need to make sure um, this switch S8 is in the up position for TTL signal and the sync switch over here is also in the up position the H plus V of horizontal plus vertical sync and uh, this switch here 
S, um, S10 all you have to do is make sure all the uh, little switches are down in the off position and uh, that's it for the uh, the TTL connection um, for the RGB analog connections so if you have a Mazda Control M2, T2, M32 you may um, have a 15 pin connection so in which case you would use this socket here again make sure it's firmly seated in the Molex connector connects to the female that is already on your machine you set the TTL switch um, RGB switch into the down position the sync you can have in either H plus V or the uh, sync G position the bottom one um, I typically leave it in the top position and again make sure all these switches are down in the off position um, and that's it for your MTT2 M22 with the RGB analog connection and lastly if you have the um, M plus or T plus then you'll use this little adapter board which is a 15 pin sub D connector to a PCB edge connector and uh, that just fits into there again make sure it's firmly seated the uh, switch here needs to be in the down position and keep that in the uh, H plus V position up here and those switches stay in the down position um, and that's it then you've got your power connection to, to make using your uh, kettle connector connector um, so plug that into the power socket and then lastly um, you'll need to get the existing earth connection that's on your uh, machine at the moment and uh, make the connection to to here. It's usually a spade or a, a, a ring connection that you you need to make. This this case of course just simply slots in and and screws to the existing um, uh, system so just push it up against the um, the existing front panel on your uh, machine. Here we have the monitor powered up on the bench and uh, it's connected to a, a test pattern generator and um, so when you power up the, the screen for the first time you'll see um, an init OK message uh, a little blue box in the middle of the screen um, the screen will probably go black it may say no signal initially um, but once it finds a signal then it will sync and come up uh, with your display but um, you'll see nothing on the display if there is no signal uh, coming into the, the monitor so if you don't see any video um, make sure that the connections uh, on the back are correct and the uh, video connection leads to and from your monitor are firmly in place and uh, it should fire, uh, power up fine so what we've got here is the uh, uh, test pattern for the color bars and uh, the grayscale, the crosshatch, the dots, a red screen, white screen, uh, what we call a frequency burst which is a series of uh, vertical black and white lines and uh, the black sync screen. So on the back of the display are the three buttons that um, adjust the on-screen display. The bottom button is the mode button and you press that and you can cycle through the various uh, modes on the screen. Uh, pixel clock, the horizontal size so that um, squeezes the display to make it narrower or larger, wider and then the vertical size which will adjust the vertical size of the screen uh, the modes you don't need to worry about there's various different modes that you could set up in here you can load the default settings again um, and then you've got the brightness which you adjust again with the plus and minus buttons the contrast 
and uh, then back to uh, the normal positions again. And that's the on-screen display. Hope you really enjoy these monitors, they are superb.